Hello and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther and today I am giving you some updated tips on how to have your best success at winter sewing. Now if this is your first time hearing about winter sewing, check out my Winter Sewing 101 series where I break down everything you need to know. For those who are new to this topic, winter sewing is basically a way of using things like milk jugs to uh, grow your seedlings, your seeds outdoors in the winter um, for your spring and summer gardens instead of indoors under grow lights. All right, so let's get right to it. One thing I hear often asked and brought up is when should I start my winter sowing? Well, in the past, I have suggested that you don't want to start winter sowing until February, and the reality is that actually only really applies to zones one through seven. Warmer zones start earlier. Uh, so I'm in zone 7A, and zones one through seven typically start their winter sowing in February and conclude it by mid-April. If you are in zones eight or higher, eight, uh, 8 through 10, uh, you want to start basically now, you want to start in December, your winter sowing, and you want to finish it up in February, maybe early March. Now, one important thing I'd like to clarify here also, in addition to timing, is the order in which you should put seedlings out, the order in which you should winter sow your varieties. So you can winter sow anything at any point in your winter sowing window, uh, and you can just reach into the your, you can just reach into your bag or your, your container of seeds, pick out a variety and winter sow it at any point in that window. Uh, some people tend to go in order out of preference. Like I tend to do videos in groups so that I just make sure I don't miss anything, but I don't want to give the misimpression or the incorrect impression that that requires a certain order of things. Tip number two, which is something that I have said in the past, and uh, I, I think it bears worth repeating, which is when I am winter sowing, when I am preparing my containers, I try to put one seed per hole. Now that you can't do this when you have like seeds that are tiny, that are minuscule, in that case you just sprinkle them. But if you have seeds that are easy to discern from each other, you want to do one seed per hole. And the reason for this is, if I was doing, if I was growing my seedlings indoors under grow lights, if I put multiple seeds in a hole, I'd be able to go and pinch off the others or maybe transplant all three seeds that grew out of the three seeds I planted into individual containers. When you're winter sowing, when you're winter sowing, let's assume this is all duct taped up, right? You seal it up and you leave it until you're ready to transplant. You're not going back in to take out, to pinch out seedlings and things like that. If you have more than one seedling in the same spot, not only do they compete for nutrients a little bit more, but also separating them when you want to transplant can be a real pain in the mm -mm -mm. And it's much easier if you give a little bit of space between each seedling to get those roots separated when you go to transplant them. Tip number three has to do with how many seeds you should put in your winter sowing container. So you have really three ways I think about it. One is for the smaller containers, so this isn't the exact container you use, but this is about the width of a soda bottle or a half gallon of milk. You're going to want to do four to five seeds, you know, one, two, three, four around the edge and one in the middle. Um, and that will give the seedlings enough room to grow and not crowd each other out. Some plants take more space like squashes and zucchinis, um, so you may want to do a few less. But in general, four to five is okay for, is a pretty good average for your smaller containers. For something like a milk jug, which has a lot more space for your seeds, I tend to do six to eight seeds. One quick caveat here is if you are planting seeds that are older, let's say you have a seed packet from 2020, you're actually gonna probably want to add a couple more seeds than you would if you had seeds that you bought this year. Depending on the variety, the amount of seeds that will sprout called the germination rate is lower, less seeds will sprout, and so you're gonna need a few more seeds to make sure you get as many as you are looking to have ultimately in the end. There is a third option, which I don't do because I don't have the heart to just not try to make every single seedling survive. But your third option is what's called hunk of seedlings. Um, and this involves just scattering all the seeds you want into the container. Um, some people do this with like herbs, for example. And then when it comes time to transplant into your garden, you end up cutting out uh, hunks of potting mix with seedlings and you plant an entire hunk of multiple seedlings in one spot. And the idea is the strongest will survive. Tip number four, and I think this tip applies more to thinking about when you're planting in a container, thinking about how those seedlings are going to grow. And the reason I say this is, if you look, if you look at this water jug, see how this handle goes in like this? This area is going to be an area where the seedling cannot grow straight up. It's going to have to grow around the handle. You can see on the inside the same thing here, how this cuts out an area here. 
So what I do is when I am winter sowing, I tend to keep, when I'm putting seed, seeds in my jug, I tend to keep this area without seeds. I don't plant seeds right here because otherwise they have to bend out and then compete with others. Tip number five, I have created a very, very silly rhyme, but hopefully it'll help you remember. Label twice and make your winter sowing life nice. <laughs> What I mean by that is you need to put a label of the variety you're growing both inside of your sealed winter sown container and outside. So you can use things like um, popsicle sticks or plastic labels, or you can even cut up, some people cut up old uh, window blinds or, or yogurt containers to make strips for labels. Put them inside of your container and then label the outside of the container as well. And I like to do both, uh, for the outside, I like to do both the variety and the date that I winter sowed it because sometimes I'm curious, oh, you know, I may have done multiple varieties of something. I'm curious how it performed compared to others based on when it was sown. Um, so you can use a paint pen. I prefer black paint pens, but I can't track mine down at the moment. So um, use a paint pen. They fade the least in the sun and you mark the outside of the container or you can write it on um, um, the duct tape that you seal the container with. And the reason why you want to label twice is because it provides a fail safe to not lose track of what you are growing. And trust me, if you think you can remember what you have put in your container, you will not remember. And just in case somehow the label outside gets rubbed off or fades, having it written on the inside is super helpful to so you know what to transplant. Also, if you're gonna give the seedlings away to friends or family or sell them, you also need to know what the variety is. And there's an added bonus, which is the label that you have inside of the container will also be a label you put in your garden next to your variety. So you've already got your label for your garden made. And that actually leads me to number six. All right, I'm on two hands now. I'm gonna stop doing the hand gestures, which is the importance of keeping a journal or a log of what you are winter sowing. So this, you can see it's getting old. I've had it for quite a few years, a few years, and I keep track of what all I winter sow. Not only do I log like lessons learned, but when I winter sow something, I log the date, I log what I winter sowed. Sometimes I'll put other details, but really all you need is the date and what you've winter sowed. Um, and I like to also count how many seeds I put, what kind of potting mix I did, if I'm trying to track whether I like one over the other, um, as well as I leave a line for how that seedling did. And the reason this is helpful is when you are winter sowing, especially if you're not going in any particular order, which again, you can go in any order you want, but if you're like, did I actually winter sow that? Did I already get that outside? Instead of having to go outside to look at your jugs and try to figure out what has already been done, you can just open up your handy dandy log and see what you already did. Uh, in addition to that, in future years, it'll help you remember what you've already grown, what you liked or didn't like, and it gives you an opportunity to, to, to really think through trying out some fun varieties. Number seven, which is something I've mentioned before, but I think it's important to remind people, especially if it's their first time coming at this, which is to use potting mix or potting soil and not seed starting mix. The reason why you want to do potting mix or potting soil is because they basically have the nutrients the plant will need for the entire time of growing until you transplant it. If you were growing a seedling indoor under a grow light, you would basically be able to use a seed starting mix, which does not have any nutrients in it. And once the seedling gets to a certain size, you're going to need to repot it. You're going to upsize it to another small container before you transplant it. And that container will have potting mix. Seeds have enough energy in themselves to actually get go the first set of leaves going. But when they come to getting bigger, when they start producing leaves that look like the plant will look the rest of its life, they actually need the nutrients from your soil. So when you are winter sowing, you're basically giving the plant everything it will need until you have to transplant it. And that is why potting mix or potting soil is so important. And people have different opinions on what potting mixes work best. I tend to use, um, Ocean Forest, which I find, um, which is Fox Farm. I tend to use that because I find it is fluffy. It doesn't hold the moisture too much. It holds just the right amount for my area, which gets a lot of rain in the spring. Um, so it reduces the amount of mildew compared to some other premium potting mixes. But you can use whatever you want, whatever you prefer. What I will say is the better quality that you can afford, whatever is within your budget or preference, um, go for it. Um, if, you, if you can only afford the less expensive, the ones that don't have as high premium quality mixes, that's okay. It's better to do winter sowing than not to do it at all. But if you can afford a couple extra dollars for um, the higher premium mix, it will help your seedlings do better in general. Number eight has to do with when you're ready to transplant your seedlings. And in a nutshell, it has to do with making sure you're prepped your gardens are ready, 
your place is ready, you have extra materials for saving and potting up seedlings you're not going to use, just make sure you're prepared and planned for the time when you have to transplant. It'll make your life easier. So let me explain a little bit more. Winter sowing works so well that you're going to end up with more seedlings than you could possibly use in your garden. And you're going to want to give some away. You're not going to want to throw them all out. And rather than crowd out your garden, have some solo cups on hand or something you can transplant extra seedlings into with labels, with markers. Make sure you have extra potting mix to be able to pot up those plants to give away or to sell. And make sure you have a plan in your garden for generally where you're going to put those seedlings. Uh, it really will make your life easier. And as for when you should transplant your seedlings, well, for starters, you want to wait until your plants are probably about two to four inches tall at least and have at least two sets of true leaves. Those are the leaves that look like the plant will look the rest of its lives, not the first set of leaves that those plants produce. If you're transplanting something that can handle a frost, like kale, for example, you want to transplant that in early, in early spring, late winter, basically when frosts are still happening is a fine time. But if you are wanting to transplant something that um, can't handle a frost, like tomatoes or peppers or eggplants, you want to wait until after your last average frost date. And you can look up, you can Google average frost date for your zone or your zip code and get a sense of it. Another reason you want to be ready to transplant as soon as possible is the earlier you can get your seedlings transplanted, the sooner you can start harvesting from them. This last year, I made the mistake of waiting way too long and I didn't really have much choice because of other circumstances but it ended up meaning that my tomatoes were two to three weeks behind others in my area and other fruits and vegetables as well so the sooner you can get them out and transplanted the faster you can start reaping the rewards of all of your efforts number nine is winter sowing is not set it and forget it while it is a much easier process than growing your seedlings indoors especially for people who are new to gardening and to growing your seeds from start um, it does require some maintenance so you need to track the moisture levels in your winter sown containers you need to um, once once they have sprouted once your seeds have sprouted you need to watch uh, you need to watch how they're doing and that they're not stressed that they have enough water um, again, you don't need to worry about cold temperatures for your containers that have no sprouts. Cold cannot hurt seeds. Um, no freezing temperature can hurt a seed. They're dormant. And so you don't need to worry about cold temperatures if your jugs have no sprouts. But once your seedling sprouts, you do need to watch the overnight temperature forecast. And if it's going to be a super deep freeze, you will want to cover those seedlings, those containers with a blanket or something like that. Um, and I've done a video on that. Um, but winter sowing is definitely not set it or forget it. And my last tip I will say is to have fun with it. So this year I am, you know, I'm, I'm following the process. I'm using the things I know have worked well, but I like to experiment. So this year I'm doing a number of experiments that I'm going to show you in the coming weeks um, to see how they go because I've seen people try different options and I want to see for myself how they work. Um, so have fun, trust the process, but don't be afraid to experiment and enjoy and learn what works best for your region. Every single location is going to have some special nuance to it. Some places are windier than others and so your jugs will dry out faster. Some are more sheltered and warmer than others, and so you don't have to worry as much about a deep freeze, right? So just get to know your region, get to know your area, get to know what other gardeners in your area do. And uh, I look forward to hearing about all your successes, and I wish you the best of luck in your winter sowing season, and um, I'll see you next time.